Hi, in this slide we're going to kind of uh, clarify something. Um, a lot of people say, wait a minute, you're looking at these different um, whale curves and you know I only have one financial operating profit number, it's $200,000 for the year, so I don't get this internal peak profit number and why it varies. If we look at internal peak profit for customers, for example, uh, maybe that's 20% uh, of the customers give us a peak of 140. If we looked at uh, products, we saw where, you know, 15% gave us a uh, 1,000% or something ridiculous. If we looked at vendors, uh, you know, another 15% of the vendors gave us 350. If we looked at customer segments or territories or reps, and we can look at all these we will find different numbers for all all these 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 um, uh, sort of lenses of looking at how we get to our bottom line. Uh, but what's I think most important to realize is that uh, what is the driving force? And I think that and if we're late in a life cycle and we see customers. Uh, are struggling, they're not making money, uh, they're consolidating themselves. 90% um, of their spend is on commodities. We know it, they know it, uh, the brands are all the same. Uh, so uh, if we want to grow our business, we're going to have to get bigger share of customers and bigger share of the right customers, ideally in the, maybe the right niche for us because we're not perfectly suited to go after all types and sizes of customers. So if customers are the driving force, and we go find our most profitable customers, it's not surprising that they're buying the most profitable items, which in turn make those vendors the most profitable vendors. These customers also make certain segments of customers the most profitable segments. They also make a territory very profitable because if a rep is lucky and has the right core customers where it's our best sweet spot, then they, they, they look like they've got a very profitable territory. What's interesting, though, is when we, we look at all these, these lenses and try to go in there and figure out what is, what is the, the, uh, uh, the, the intersection point right there in the middle where we have the most profitable items being sold to the most profitable customers. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's like if we have this huge mass of activity, it's like a solid, flawless diamond as far as its value. Conversely, at the other extreme, when we go look at all the, the, the net losers, there's an intersection where with one customer, where we're losing the most money, it's every aspect of how we sell that customer couldn't be more dysfunctional. It's kind of like thinking about uh, flipping nickels and if uh, uh, heads is good and tails is bad as far as a way to do something and you have a thousand accounts, which is two to the tenth. If we had 10 nickels and we flipped them, and at one, one out of a thousand times they all came up heads, that's our most profitable customer buying our most profitable items in the most profitable discipline way, etc. They're right around the corner from us, the freight's not an issue, they're buying standard big volume items and so forth. But, you know, one in a thousand times, it's 11, it's, a, it's 10 tails, and that's our absolutely biggest losing customer. So we have these freaks of nature, both uh, diamonds, and, and sort of antimatter that just eats up our profits. And that's where the extreme leverage is. So all of these views can be seen. We may be looking at customers and we'll right click and we'll go look at other, other aspects, or we may be looking at products and we right, right click and go look at other aspects. So we can get the full story or the full context of why there are these extreme leverage points. So uh, the moral of the story is we wanna find the diamonds and triple them don't lose them, and we're going to find the antimatter and turn it into diamonds. Thank you.